everybody. Welcome back to Julie's Roots and Shoots. My name is Julie. Today we're in the kitchen. It is one o'clock in the afternoon and today I actually got inspired by watching one of Acre Homesteads on YouTube. She did a, a huge like five hour meal prepping day where she just made a bunch of stuff and I was watching that this morning while I was drinking my morning cup of tea and I just felt so inspired by that and I just wanted to jump ahead of this week because lately I've been feeling just like a little like I've been dragging A and um, I just wanted to help myself out this upcoming week so we're gonna meal prep uh, breakfast and dinner and dinner kind of slides into leftovers for lunch is typically what we do in our household here so I've got two options for breakfast and then two and a half meals for dinner. So today, one sec, let me get my, my checklist. All right, so this morning I went ahead and made my little checklist and I do this pretty much every weekend because I've got a lot of stuff going on most of the time. Not like busy stuff, but a lot of stuff going on in here. So I really like to write stuff down. So the categories I've got is uh, food prep, cleaning, slash taking care of the animals, and some miscellaneous. So for my food prep, I've got a lot of chicken that I bought at the store the other day, and I'm gonna split the chicken in half, so I'm gonna do the Tex-Mex with uh, half of it, and the other half I'm gonna use for a red curry coconut base. Um, I'm not gonna be making rice today, but I thought I'd make the base because I have everything for it, and it would be super easy to just throw in some freezer bags and freeze and thaw and make it so easy for this upcoming week to just like take homemade meals out of the freezer and just heat them up. So that's the plan for all of this. Uh, for breakfast, we're going to do breakfast burritos, which I've got sausage and bacon and we're going to do potatoes and cheese. Another breakfast is I'm going to make a quiche. I've got my pie pan sitting here with the little, this is my last store-bought pie crust and I told myself I'm gonna use this up and then I'm gonna make my own pie crust. So, after this, it's on me. <laughs> so we're gonna use that for quiche and then the other, like the half dinner thing I got is, I'm just gonna make some garlic bread because I love garlic bread and I'll eat it with pretty much anything. So I bought this baguette at the store and we're just gonna make some garlic butter out of the garlic that I harvested from my garden. And we're just gonna prep this and we can eat on it throughout the week. My to-do list, I've got all of the food prep we're gonna be doing today. And then a bunch of other chores that I usually do on Sunday, like make sure the dishes are done, vacuum and mop the house, pick up the dog poop, take the trash out to the dumpster, clean out the chicken coop, move the chicken coop, all that sort of stuff. I do that typically on Sundays, so Monday morning, I can just go along my day and not have to worry or stress or be late to work. Just a bunch of things, like we're gonna refill the hummingbird feeders, which I'll walk you guys through the stations that I set up real quick. Uh, so number one, caffeination station. This is just some black tea with some cream and honey in it. So in the kitchen today, I've got my hummingbird feeders that have been empty for maybe a week and I'm gonna wash them up, clean the insides out, and then just make some more simple syrup, AKA sugar water. So we're gonna give those out back to the hummingbirds. This here is going to be for the chicken. I'm going to cook all the chicken in the crock pot and then split it up in half and half and shred it between Tex-Mex, corn and bean and a little spicy chipotle. Um, that's gonna be for Tex-Mex. And then back here, is going to be the, the red curry and um, we're gonna do coconut curry for that. So it's really, really yummy. I love making this. We've got a potato station here for breakfast burritos. I'm gonna be dicing these up, put them on a pan. But first I'm gonna make bacon on the pan in the oven and then use the bacon grease left over on the pan to cook the potatoes. This station is for the quiche. I'll bring the eggs over here. This is also for the quiche. I'm gonna cut up these. Um, sausages, they're really good. They're a sweet apple. I love these ones and the garlic roasted red pepper ones. Really yummy. So for breakfast burritos, also gonna uh, 
cook up some ground pork and then over here is for the garlic bread. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is preheat the oven and start cooking the bacon on the cookie sheet and cooking this pork sausage. I should know better than to not have my apron. <laughs> you know, buddy. Next, let's start browning some sausage. So one thing that I'm trying to do is to research and purchase some really good stainless steel pots and pans. I, as soon as I bought this, uh, it's I think it's Gotham Steel set. I want stainless steel. This has the um, non-stick coating on the inside of it. And of course, as soon as after I bought this is when I really um, started hearing about how not great it's for you. And the other thing is, is that we end up scratching all of the nonstick all the freaking time. And it's just really annoying. So like in this pan, there's already some scratches on the bottom. So I'm going to use these pans until they completely give out. And then I want to invest in some really nice pots and pans that hopefully can last me a lifetime. So that's the goal for this. Um, this was a nice set, but I would just want something more permanent, better for you, and uh, yeah. I'm gonna wash these potatoes and we'll start dicing them up. Time to stir up the sausage here. The other thing about stainless steel pans that I really want is I want to move away from these plastic utensils. I really like using wood and metal and everything just lasts longer. It is a little more of an investment, but I just, I've gone through so many plastic and like cheap silicone utensils that it's just not worth it to me and I would much rather just buy metal things that will last decades if taken care of properly. So. This was just ground pork not sausage so I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning to it. We're gonna do some old Canadian steak rub, some smoked paprika, A little bit of garlic powder. And these here are onions that I caramelized last fall and I believe I made them with you. There should be a video about them somewhere. Um, and I'm gonna pop in a can of these caramelized onions into the breakfast sausage as well. and uh, salt and pepper. We're also going to add some sage. Okay. I'm 
All right, back to cutting potatoes. Well, I think that's plenty of potatoes. I am just, I washed four smaller, smaller ones, so we'll just put these aside, but I think this here is pretty good. So the sausage is set. We're gonna set this aside. Check the bacon. Woo! Almost, probably just a couple more minutes in there. So if it was just me eating this bacon, I'd probably pull it out right now because I like bacon pretty chewy. But my boyfriend, he likes crunchy bacon, so I guess we're gonna meet in the middle somewhere. I guess I'll be nice. Chicken is always so juicy and it always leaks everywhere on me. Okay, so here's the chicken. I got almost five pounds for less than $10. This is just from Winco. It's, it wasn't on sale or anything. I just, I think that Winco's always a good price. So I'm gonna get this chicken out, trim the fat off, and then I'm gonna cut it into probably just in half or thirds or quarters, something real simple to just throw in that crock pot and start that cook time. This here is my little crock pot that I got at a thrift store. Um, I, it says rival crock pot, stoneware slow cooker. It's just something I had when I lived in a studio apartment. This is all that would fit on my counter space. So it is pretty small, but I've used it a ton. And it was probably only something like three or five dollars at the time. Um, yeah, so good little crock pot and that's what we're gonna just put the chicken directly into. Bacon looks pretty darn good. Gonna let this cool down just a bit, and then I'll take the bacon off, strain off most of the bacon grease into a jar for later use, and then we'll put the potatoes on. Back to the chicken, I got it all trimmed up. I am not super like nitpicky with the trimming. I'll cut off a lot of the chicken on the fat in the weird parts, and what I end up doing every time I do this is I'll just fry this up really quick in a little pan, and I feed it to my dogs for their dinner. So, like none of this is gonna go to waste. So I'm actually, I'm pretty just like chop, 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 eh, done, because I like things nice and quick. So for $10 of chicken, this is like a half full crock pot. And we're gonna bring this over here. And I'm gonna set this to high heat because I, it's chicken. I don't trust chicken. I prefer it like cooked and dry compared to like, juicy. I don't really care about cook time or anything. I just want it cooked fast. So high heat, I'm gonna grab a lid because we've had this crock pot for so long it, I we don't have a lid for it. So it just gets a replacement. All right, before we move on, I need to clean up some of this mess because I can't handle it. I'm gonna go ahead and put those chicken scraps directly in this little pan. I'm not gonna worry about cooking it right now uh, just because I have the all sorts of burners and um, hot things going. So we're just gonna set this aside, but I'm not gonna forget about it and my dogs won't let me forget about it. So we'll be cooking this up for them and that'll be part of their dinner. Now I'm gonna wash my cutting board and knife and hands really, really well. Don't mess around with raw chicken, it's not worth it. So I'm taking the bacon off of the baking sheet, trying not to make too much of a greasy mess. And it smells so yummy. 
This bacon turned out wonderful. I love cooking bacon on a cookie sheet. And my stepmom actually taught me to do that because growing up we always just did it on on a cast iron skillet or something and it'd pop all over the place. Well, after ruining dozens of shirts and getting dozens of burns, what she does is she'll take a piece of tin foil and crunch it up so that it's really um, like rigid. There's a lot of texture in it. And she'll put the bacon over that and then that drains the grease for you if you don't wanna deal with a cleanup. So bacon set aside. That looks like enough extra grease to warrant saving some. And I always pour my leftover bacon grease into a tiny little jar. It's just the little jars I have on hand. I'm gonna turn the oven down to 350 and that'll be for the potatoes. It was on 400 for the bacon. We've got some saved bacon grease we'll put aside by the butter dish. And now we'll add the potatoes. So we're gonna mix these in, try to coat them fully with the leftover bacon grease. And now we'll put the potatoes in the oven. Uh, I am going to set a timer because I am one to forget all the time. We'll do, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. The next thing to go into the oven after the potatoes are done is going to be the quiche. So I'm going to prep that now. So that way by the time the potatoes are done, I can just slide the quiche right into the oven. So let's go ahead and do that. For starters, this pre-made dough, if you're gonna use it, was in the fridge for quite some time. And you always wanna let this warm up to room temperature before you unroll it, otherwise you can break it. And it's just, it's still useful, it's just not as pretty. Once it's room temp, it's a lot easier to unroll and get the perfect circle. So I cleaned up my station. I like to try and get the pie crust as even as possible so that way when the egg eggs level out, you don't have eggs that are gonna go underneath the pie crust. So then I'll just kind of smash it in a little bit, try to raise this crust up as much as possible. A little something like that. Now I'm gonna say something that's pretty controversial in the a pie crust community. I prefer to not to pre-bake the pie crust. I don't, I just, it's not my thing. Um, I don't mind something a little softer, not, not like undercooked or anything. And I guess maybe this is just with quiche because I haven't really made a whole lot of, of other pies. But for making quiches, I prefer to not pre-bake this pie crust. I just put it in and then put the eggs in and then into the oven it goes and it comes out perfect every time for me. So I'll show you guys what I do there. And as always, you do you. This is just what I do. Let me know down in the comments if you guys pre-bake or just leave your dough raw before you make quiches. And we'll see what kind of pie crust community controversy we can get into. So now we're going to start cracking our eggs in our got an egg bowl, specifically for this. What I've learned when you're doing a recipe that calls for a lot of eggs is to crack your egg into a separate bowl and then add it to the bigger bowl. And this is just for just in case if you get a rotten egg or a weird egg. I mean, just if something happens, you don't want to ruin a dozen eggs versus your one egg. Let's get to cracking. For my quiches, I typically do about a dozen eggs or so. 
for one pie crust and that really depends on a how many eggs I have and B if I'm going to be adding a lot of other ingredients like um, if I were gonna do something that takes a lot of space like chopped zucchini I would do less eggs or sometimes if I just I can do all eggs and I can fit 18 eggs into a pie crust it just kind of depends on the ingredients that I'm going to be using. But today we're just going to do a couple of cut up sausages and some cheese on top. So that's it's going to be pretty egg heavy. I guess I should say that oops, some of my chickens are laying smaller eggs right now too. So if you have bantam chickens or you buy small or medium eggs, you might want more than say your large eggs. It just kind of just kind of all depends. Where are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll do another one and make a dozen. Then we're just gonna whisk these up really good like you're making scrambled eggs. I think I'm gonna add just a couple more eggs because I think some of them were a little tiny. I'm gonna add just maybe two or three more real quick. How are you doing, Lily? I do wanna note one thing since we still have at least 10 or 15 more minutes on the potatoes that I'm not going to dump the eggs into this quiche pan just yet because I don't want wet mixture sitting in a raw dough sheet for too long. I'll probably do it about five minutes before. So I'm um, not gonna dump this in quite just yet because we're waiting for the oven to open up. Next thing, we're gonna cut up sausage. Just gonna do a real quick chop of these. Just gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, smoked paprika, a little bit of garlic, and we'll call that good. So just gonna mix this in. And I'm going to prep the cheese that's gonna be melted on top of it while we're waiting. typically like to just use whatever I have. I'm not gonna go out to the store and buy something specific for this, but just the other day I picked up some Colby Jack and some Swiss, so I'm going to um, cut this up into little strips and just kind of alternate the pieces. And something that I kind of like to do is make little pictures or, you know, like make a fun little design out of it. Just something, something a little extra it's fun being a little extra sometimes. So I usually just kind of cut them up into a few pieces so that way it's more of an even spread. So we're not gonna put this cheese on until like it's ready to be melted on top of the cooked quiche. So we're just gonna set this aside. Put our good cheese back in the fridge. Drink another sip of tea. And check on the potatoes in the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna take them out and stir them. Then they're gonna go back in for another 10 minutes or so. I put 
the potatoes in for 10 more minutes and I'm going to prep the assembly line to put the breakfast burritos together. So I've got burrito sized tortillas. Okay, we've got a few more minutes left on the potatoes. So now I'm going to dump our quiche mixture into the pan so I can reuse this egg bowl so we can make scrambled eggs for the breakfast burritos because that is a pretty important part for us. And I got the assembly line put together and I was like, oh, we don't have any scrambled eggs. So quiche, here we go. Man, that was just about perfect. This is a pretty perfect level of filling to pie crust. It's not quite even all the way around, but there's definitely pie crust all that you can see all the way around so that way when the key, when the egg like puffs up a little bit, it's not going to leak down into the sides and make it really hard for you to scoop it out of the pan. So right there, perfect. And you'll have a little bit of a lip on your pie and it'll look real pretty. So this quiche is good. Now we're going to crack some eggs to make scrambled eggs for the breakfast burritos. So I'm going to go put this aside and not spill it. Oh, that one was a double! That was a double yolk. These two, these two little ones were in that one egg. Oh, that's exciting. That was probably from one of my new girls. If you're new to chickens, and also I am risking putting these directly in this bowl, but these, all of these eggs are really fresh. These are from um, maybe two, three days ago. Oh, jeepers. Oh boy, still good. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll clean that later. Um, so yeah, I'm taking a risk, but these are fresh eggs and I've never encountered a rotten egg with my chickens before and I'm usually pretty good about getting to them. Hi buddy, what are you doing over to you? You helping in the kitchen? Well that was pretty fun. I definitely had a couple doubles. This was a double, that, and maybe this one was a double. I, I might have had a triple in here, it's hard to tell. Um, cause I was trying to pay attention to the camera. But yeah, it's got little double eggs. And just so you know, it's totally normal for new chickens. Um, double eggs doesn't mean anything. It's just their bodies adjusting to producing eggs every day. And I know there's a lot of, I've seen a lot of internet um, threads where people are like, is it a sign? Like, I've cracked so many eggs open in their doubles, what does it mean? And sometimes it's just a genetic thing too. Okay, scrambled eggs, a check. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little dollop of heavy cream in here to make them a little bit fluffy. You can also use milk or you don't even have to do this. So now we're gonna head back to the sausage and onions. And I'm gonna reheat this pan up a little bit, push these to the side so that way we can scramble these eggs up kind of by themselves a little bit. We've got three minutes on the potatoes. I'm gonna set the timer for the quiche to 25 minutes at 350. The potatoes look so good. Let those cool down for a second while we finish these scrambled eggs. And I just looked in the freezer to see if I had any more peppers um, that I preserved from the garden last year. And I think we used them all up. So no peppers for this breakfast, but that's okay. It'll still turn out really yummy. It's 
time to add the potatoes. And then I'm just gonna incorporate all this together so that way when we're making burritos in the assembly line, I can just take a dollop and put it right on the tortilla. Yummy, yummy. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I love breakfast burritos. Probably one of my favorites. Well, I do like quiche too. All right, so that's that. We'll remove this from the heat and uh, just let it cool down. For our assembly line here, I've got out the tortillas, the cheese, the bacon, and um, I'm just gonna use aluminum foil for these guys. So I'm gonna pre-whip some cheese real quick. I've got enough of everything to do eight breakfast burritos, so we'll see if we can do more than that or not. Before I get going on the assembly, I wanted to show you guys this really beautiful hot pad that one of my coworkers made specifically for me and gave it to me as a present. Um, it's really beautiful. She's a huge quilter and she found this fabric and she thought of me so she <laughs> she made it for me and I've got I've got two of them and they're just denim on the back, but I thought they were just so beautiful and thoughtful and it was a truly precious, precious gift that she got them for me and it always warms my heart because, I mean, come on, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous stuff. Alas, it was time for me to charge my camera battery and I only have one. So I put you guys down for a second and to let my battery charge up a little bit, I went ahead and I chopped up the bacon, added it to the breakfast burrito mixture, and I got some Asiago cheese out. So for burritos, we're doing Asiago and pepper jack. We are ready to take the quiche out of the oven and put the cheese on to melt it. So I'm gonna turn the timer and the oven off. And then I went ahead, I got a pan out for our coconut curry. I uh, opened up all the lids on the canned goods that we're gonna be using today. I checked on the chicken and it's coming along nicely. So it's not anywhere quite near done yet, but it's getting cooked pretty good. I just stir it occasionally and kind of rotate the raw sides onto the hot sides of the crock pot. So stir that, that keeps sitting. Put that lid back on. I don't have an instant pot, otherwise this chicken would probably already be done. So crock pot it is, the old fashioned way. Okay, let's take the quiche out and put the cheese on. So this quiche has been in the oven for probably 30, 35 minutes. And again, it depends on what type of ingredients you put in your quiche that's going to affect that cook time. One way that I do is I give the quiche a shake and as long as that middle doesn't wiggle around, it's cooked. So to the cheese. So now we're just going to melt that cheese. The oven is off and um, I'm probably just gonna leave this cracked. I didn't forget about the garlic. So we're doing the garlic bread. And for that, I've got two sticks of butter, just getting a little bit warm on top of the, the stove here. It's a little warm, but it's not hot. All right, it's finally time to do the breakfast burritos and I'm just gonna put the filling in the middle, roll it up, throw it on the aluminum foil, and then just roll it up tightly and put it in a bag for the freezer.
Next, we need some garlic for our garlic bread. And I think I'm gonna go with this one. So I'm gonna get the garlic ready for the butter. And to do that, I'm just gonna grind up some cloves. My boyfriend bought this little garlic grinder, I guess is what you'd call it, at a cookware store a long time ago, and it does a pretty darn good job. And you just sort of twist it up in there and it has teeth that just like grinds it. It's a lot faster than using a garlic press. Now we're gonna head on over to the hummingbird feeder station. And to get started, we're just making a simple syrup. So I'm gonna make a concentrate of the sugar water so i put two cups in the microwave and heated it up then i'm going to put a cup of sugar in it and then i'm going to split that between the two hummingbird feeders and then just fill the hummingbird feeders the rest of the way up with tap water Now we're going to head on over to the garlic bread station and for the garlic butter I'm going to be adding tarragon, basil, and rosemary to the mortar and pestle and just grind that up pretty fine. And then I'm going to add it to the butter with a little bit of salt and pepper and of course the garlic. Then we're going to slowly spread the melted butter onto the French bread loaf. And this butter is a little more melted than what I would usually like, but I got this little, I'm not even sure what you call them, they're like a little brush, like a whisk brush, and that works pretty good. Then we're just going to pop the French bread in the oven to get it a little crispy and melt that butter all the way through. Now we're headed over to the Thai red coconut curry chicken. I'm going to add two cans of coconut milk, one little jar of the Thai red curry, and just a dash of extra ginger because I love ginger. 
Then I'll be adding in the coconut flakes and we're gonna let this all come together and let the flavors intertwine before we start adding the chicken. The chicken is finally ready to be shredded, so I'm gonna do that now and then add half of it to this coconut curry base. And then, and then the coconut curry is done and I'm gonna turn off the heat and just let it start to cool down while those flavors get incorporated with each other. Then the rest of this chicken is going to be flavored right in the crock pot. I'm gonna throw in a uh, little packet of taco seasoning. I've got two cans of beans that were just extra in my cabinet. I usually like to use black beans in this, but kidney beans and, and pinto beans are totally fine. It tasted just as amazingly delicious as ever. And then I'm going to add two cans of corn, whichever type. I just, these are two that I had. And then one jar of my homemade canned caramelized onions. And then the secret ingredient is some cilantro dressing, which is amazing ever since I found it and it's come into my life. I love cilantro and this is the best. I highly recommend you guys go try it. So after mixing all of this Tex-Mex in, we are pretty much done. Here goes the taste test. That is pretty yummy. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the cilantro. Mm. That's good. That That is really good now. Mm. Okay, so we've got the Tex-Mex chicken chili basically done. And I think we're actually gonna have some of this for dinner. So I am gonna keep it on low heat so, so it stays warm for us. The coconut chicken curry is done. We just gotta wait for it to cool down and then I can put it into some freezer bags and we'll freeze them flat. So just waiting for this to cool down. The hummingbird feeders are done and ready to go outside. The quiche is done and ready to be cut up and put in the fridge. We'll probably eat the quiche first. And then we've got nine breakfast burritos that I'll put into the freezer and we'll eat on these after we finish the quiche. We've got garlic bread. Ooh, that's nice and crispy. Mm. The last thing we need to do is, uh, I cooked up the chicken scraps and we're gonna give the dogs dinner real quick because it is five o'clock. We're just gonna put this on top of their dog kibble. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. I got a lot of breakfast and dinner prepped for this week. Some of it's in the fridge, ready to be eaten soon, like in the next couple of days. And some of it is in the freezer for easy meals for the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on the next video really soon. Bye.